Welcome to this episode number 40 of your next trade called today praying for soft landing. If you like what you see, if you like the channel, please subscribe, put a comment on or put a like. So praying for soft landing. Now it's all about Q4. We have been flagging over and over that what matters for this year was Q4. Why? Because the US consumer will be starting to struggle. So two weeks ago, three weeks ago, everything was fine. Even a week ago, the VIX was at 13%. We said that be extremely careful last weekend when you sell volatility. Why? Because you'll be collecting a bit of premium. Then suddenly the implied volatility, the volatility will rise and you'll be losing a lot of money. So we underline the uh, strategy that has been working so far so well in 2023 until last week, which was, you know, selling straddle over and over, both on the weekly, on the daily. Um, and then suddenly through the OPEX, through the Fed, through the FOMC meeting, then suddenly the uh, volatility went on the rise. So today we're going to be looking at what has been happening for the week, what's going to happen next, and uh, some trades uh, that we should be looking at. So let's start with what has been the week to data set performances. So clearly it is um, it has been a risk off week. So if you look at the light blue, which is the, the stocks, uh, we got the S&P down 3%, the Nasdaq 3.6%, stock 600 in Europe 2%. So the stocks really struggling for the week, um, especially in the second part of this week. If we look now at the FX uh, looking through the US dollar, so US dollar still strengthening, not like crazy for the week, similar, but you know, the trend is still the same. Dollar has been uh, pretty strong and, and actually very strong over the last month or two. Uh, and this week is not very different with the risk off market. When you get a risk off market, what happens very often, um, market participants will go for the US dollar. Not necessarily for the gold, gold flattish for the week, WTI flattish kind of down 0.8%, copper, uh, which is a good tell of, you know, how the US economy, how is the world economy doing? Not that great. So really looking into Q4, uh, we get some, some red flags. What about the week to date industry performance? So as you can see, it's mostly all about red. Uh, you do have like a bit of, of green with silver, with the US dollar, a bit of gold, but the rest very weak. Um, S&P around this level. Uh, so that tells you that you had a lot of underperformers. What is important to look at now is what is underperforming. Consumer discretionary, yes, it is true that you know there is a bit of weight, a big weight uh, for Tesla and Amazon on the XLY, for instance. But still, the consumer discretionary um, um, industry is now struggling. So that tells you we are going into Q4. Q4 is extremely important uh, for the retailers, for the consumer discretionary, because obviously this is Thanksgiving. This is the uh, holiday season. And um, we have more and more red flags coming into uh, this Q4. What about the sector's performance? Uh, looking at the week to date here, consumer discretionary, as I just said, real estate. Why the real estate? Uh, because obviously, or maybe you don't know yet, but bonds yields have been on the way up. Uh, so now we are almost at 4.5% on the 10 years. So that means, you know, it's um, not very good for the real estate. Um, the defensive through the health care have been doing the job, so outperforming the, the market, but literally all sectors of the S&P, the 11 sectors of the S&P have been struggling. Looking at the rates now, looking uh, starting with the 10 years with the US 444, we went to 4.5. Uh, we are up 10 bips, 0.1% on the week. So bonds are higher for longer. Uh, that is true. Why? Because we got inflation. Why? Because the central banks are saying, you know, that they are not going to be that accommodative. That is true um, as well for Germany, for Italy. The one that is um, a bit different was the UK. So the UK, the Bank of England on Thursday didn't raise rates. Uh, that was true as well for the Swiss bank. So we start to see some central banks um, at least stopping their um, 
hiking cycle. Uh, looking now at the Fed fund rate, so we had the FOMC meeting on, on, on Wednesday, uh, which, you know, people will be saying it's a hawkish pause. Um, and, you know, if you look at the dots from, from the, the Fed, which is a bit technical, they will tell you that, you know, they're expecting rates to go higher. But let's look now at, at, at December for this year and what, you know, what is the market pricing now and what it was pricing last week is more or less the same. So not much of a change. The odds, if you compare this 533 to this 543, that is a plus 0, 01. So, you know, odds are like 40% that they're going to be doing another 25 bips uh, hike in, in 2023. Now looking at 2024, the whole 2024, it's changed a bit. So you can see here, it has been moving uh, sorry, from the from the, the 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 last here, so changing a bit, uh, expecting the Fed to be um, uh, less accommodative and cutting a bit less rates in in 2024. So we had a bit of a change. Uh, so that is why we look at the Fed like a, a hawkish message um, in, during the FOMC message, uh, the FOMC meeting. What about the VIX? Um, so that's the VIX. Um, 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 uh, as of yesterday, 17.3%. Uh, uh, so quite interesting. If you see, look at the spike that is here, if you look at the, the spike here as well for the short-term volatility, uh, something again, uh, we told you to be extremely cautious. We, we saw more and more strategies about selling volatility, more and more people saying, you know, selling volatility is a free trade. Um, that's, you know, it's very, uh, the odds when, you, as a trader, you always think in terms of risk reward okay uh, risk reward if you're making a bit to lose a lot that is really uh, something that you don't want to be doing so uh, clearly the volatility has been spiking we went from 13 percent uh, as of last week to uh, 17 percent on average the VIX the implied volatility over time is at 19 percent if you get the VIX around 16 percent that tells you that the S&P is expected to move by 1 percent every single day so volatility is on the rise risk of week and we're going to go into the charts now starting with the S&P so S&P I told you that was a week ago uh, when we were just around the 4500 that the risk reward was pretty bad why because you were sitting in the middle of nowhere or let's say in the middle of this range again middle of the range when you can be making one and losing one as a trader you don't want to be doing these trades and i was saying that you know my view was still the same bearish view so we are now getting closer to the at least to this channel we get at the end of this month uh, for those of you who know um, there is a, a big positioning from one of the JP Morgan uh, fund that is having you know exposure uh, through options what we call the color um, and what they do is they, they they buy and they sell options and the two levels that we should be looking at are the those 4665 and the 4210 now we are getting closer to this 4210 for those levels this is not about the the s p futures like here but that should be looking at the s p so interesting to see if we could push uh, a further week uh, around this 40 to 10 uh, so that would mean another uh, three percent downside what about the nasdaq nasdaq is getting closer to an intermediate support as you can see if you if you take aside this intermediate support there is not much uh, between 40 14 900 um, and, and another 10 percent on the way down russell is really the, the the index that has been struggling for the week same picture even worse uh, really struggling this week down four percent nasdaq versus the russell consolidation consolidation as well for the winners I'm interested in looking at the banks, uh, so that's something that we're going to be talking just after, looking at the banks. Why? Because the earnings season is about to start. I mean, we are talking in three weeks' time. Uh, it always starts with JP Morgan and the banks, and, and I'm very curious of what uh, the banks will be saying, uh, because that will be obviously very important going in 2024. CL1, oil consolidating around the $90. Uh, copper struggling, as I said. Uh, we have seen uh, some deterioration, actually let me do uh, uh, for you a bit of uh, dodgy technical analysis look up so if you do something like this uh, some uh, levels are challenged uh, so that's really something to to look at which is the copper your dollar trend is still the same dollar yen again uh, we get the the fed on on thursday then we get the bank of japan on on, on friday uh, bank of japan said you know we're not going to be changing our 
a red policy. Um, so you should expect, we could expect the uh, weakening of the dollar yen. Um, and we're going to be uh, testing the 150 soon. When we're going to have the 150, you're going to see more and more headlines about potential intervention. So really something to be looking as well um, in the near future. What about the week? So the week, um, we had the OPEX, which was here, and then, you know, for a couple of days, three days, not much was happening. I'm looking at the S&P, kind of flattish, waiting for the FOMC meeting. So FOMC meeting, no change, as I said, hawkish pose saying, you know, we are going to be very careful, data dependent, blah, blah, blah. We're not going to be doing much. And then last hour, market is selling off. Why? Because bonds, if you look here, this is the chart here, if you look in blue, and uh, so that would be the S&P in blue. And if you look at the, the, the T-Note futures, as you can see, strong correlation. So bonds, yields, bonds started to sell off, yields up, a similar picture with, with the stocks that are following. And then you get two days of, of selling off and in, on Friday kind of, you know, tr trying to, to find the level of 43.80, 43.90. But literally, you know, the weakening of the, the stock market, a strong correlation uh, between the different assets. So you had a, a risk off. OK, so that was for the week for the stocks. In the meantime, something that we flagged before, that was the IPO. So you remember two or three weeks ago, there was a lot of noise about, oh, look, we're going to have the ARM IPO. This is, a, um, uh, this is a, sorry, um, done by SoftBank. We're going to have the semiconductor. So this is really hard. This is artificial intelligence, blah, blah, blah. You know, it's oversubscribed by 10 times. And then, you know, you do the IPO at $41, at, sorry, at $51, and it goes uh, around this level. So if you look at the chart here, which is this chart, um, we went to 65 to the 51 and then you know um, a week later you get another one which is the, uh, the the cart ipo similar and the two after you know five to to, to six days are trading around the ipo level so that tells you that you know all the bullshit about you know IPO market is really uh, is really strong. Uh, we're gonna have a lot of paper coming. It's very positive. That was completely bullshit. I told you uh, two weeks ago, and that is a confirmation. So for the week, we get the Bank of Japan. So we need to be watching the USD versus Japan, uh, Japanese yen. The dollar VIX at 16, 17 percent. Again, we said be very careful uh, selling the volatility. Bank of England, Swiss bank on hold uh, so instead of raising uh, rates by 25 bips they didn't do much and finally we had the uh, that was yesterday the flash cpis both in europe and in the us europe france was pretty weak germany was kind of a quiche and the picture from the us cpi was still the same that manufacturing is still weakish and and we get the services that are weakening so Again, the, the cycle is still the same. It starts with manufacturing, then services catch up. So for everyone that has been telling you this time is going to be different, we're going to have a soft landing. The odds of a soft landing are very, very low. And typically when yields are going up so quickly up, uh, that there's going to be damage in the economy. And the story again is the same with the U.S. consumer going into Q4. U.S. consumer is weakening, um, is struggling with higher oil, is struggling with some payments. And that means we should be looking at the U.S. consumer for the catalyst. So for the catalyst, I'm looking, I'm going to be starting with the U.S. consumer here, looking at the XLY, which is the and discretionary uh, ETF versus the SPY. As I said, be careful with XLY. There is a lot of weight of uh, for um, uh, Amazon and uh, Tesla, which represent roughly 40%. But the overall picture, as you can see, it has been a tough week for the uh, XLY, for uh, the US uh, uh, discretionary versus versus the S&P. Um, I don't want to do dodgy technical analysis, but similar, you know, we could see more weakening of uh, XLY. And that tells you that really uh, that simple that the US consumer is struggling. So I'm going to be looking at the personal spending. So that will be on Friday. So this is one of the big numbers. We get the personal income and spending and the PCE. We are all looking at how 70% of the GDP, which is the US consumer, is doing. Um, my view is still the same. It is uh, weakening. 
We get the GDP, the final on Thursday with the, with the claims. We get some inflation, inflation in Europe, inflation on Thursday in, in Germany, inflation on Friday. So still the same picture. We get a lot of bonds supply, 48 billion, 49, 37 billion. So it's very hard for, the, for, for bonds uh, to, to strengthen uh, when you get, you know, uh, so much bond supply. If you think about uh, this week only, we're going to have 100 billion plus coming from the US. So this is the crowding effect that we have been talking about, which is, you know, if you come with paper every single day, every single week, um, you are you need for the to meet the demand to have higher yield. So that is that is a problem in terms of, of the consumption. Similar for your next trade. I'm looking at Costco earnings on Tuesday and on Thursday Nike earnings. So really I'm interested mostly into two things. I'm interested into how the US consumer is going to be doing and I'm interested in how the banks are so looking here at the KBE versus the S&P. Uh, so as you can see we have been trading water for quite let's say three months uh, but very soon we are talking in three weeks time the banks will be coming with earnings we do know that regional banks the regional banks sorry have been struggling and keep on struggling when you get the fomc the, the fed telling telling them that yields are going to stay high for longer uh, that is a problem for the regional bank so that will be for me the next trade as you can see implied volatility uh, for the uh, the s p raised from 1.3% uh, on the weekly to 1.8. So implied volatility, realized volatility on the way up. Now what matters is the US consumer, the bonds and the banks. Okay, so that would be for your next trade. This is for me the only thing to be looking at. Otherwise, it's mostly about the beta of the uh, of the overall market. So this is it for me today. Um, if you are part of the community, uh, if you've been a, um, a subscriber of the 4x4, if you've been doing mentoring, next weekend we're going to have a group mentoring session. This is for free. We're going to be sharing ID. It's going to last, you know, something like 90 minutes, uh, something that I like to be doing. Uh, if you are interested in more uh, education, obviously you can go on the website for the 4x4 video series and or for the mentoring. If you like what you see today, subscribe to the channel. If you want to have something free, there is one, two, three channels on Discord uh, for the trading community. And if you get questions, you send me an email. So as always now, it's all about the US consumer, how the US consumer will be doing. It's again, 70% of the uh, US GDP, and we need to be looking at bonds, volatility, and consumer. Thank you, and see you next week. Bye-bye.